Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of kutzpah. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me sure. Hi, this is Franz Cantor, a cartoonist, illustrator, and toon talker, and I'm here with Paul Harvey. And Paul, what are we looking at today? Uh, we're going to have a look at Wig today. We're going Wig. to have a look at some of uh, William Ellis Green's wonderful Wig. William Ellis Green's football cartoons. So, explain to me what this is and how you got it. This is the um, tear sheets yep. from the dailies. So, Weggy. Uh, cut all these cartoons out in the 50s, Yep. Um, kept a, a beautiful book of all these footy cartoons. Yep. I just love the way he's yep. hand illustrated it's football magic. cartoons on the yep. front of this. And then over the years, so this is the 50s, over the yep. years he's put somebody's phone number on here, so <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a ring. It's been dog-eared, it's, it's been well used, it's got some little ink stains and but being it's a, been hung, hanging around the desk. It's been kicking around, but being a WEG fan, I think... You know, it was the 50s and 60s mm. that Wegg was um, drawing at his best. Yep. Um, so he follows a long line of guys like Sam Wells and um, From, Gurney. What was the 40s, 30s and 40s? Oh, 20s. Yeah, 20s. Sammy Wells started in the 20s. So right through the time before Weggy started, they'd yep. do a, an overview of what happened in the in the footy yep. on the weekend. On the week. And what was, what was sort of weekend, coming yeah. up. Yeah. And uh, Weg's just, you know, flexing his muscles with these wonderful caricatures. That's yeah. Ray Garby, Ray Garby's Look nose. Look at this sort of uh, um, retro. Back then, in the 50s, this had been retro. This is like a 1920s, 1930s style. Yeah, very you know, Caricatures, much. very elegant style. You can't really tell. You've got to really zoom in here. These were quite big. How, how big would these be? A2 in size? When he would work them up. Yeah. Yeah, probably A2. And um, you can he worked see... large web because he loved that sweep of texture. Yeah. Um, when he worked, he, yeah. he loved getting his arm into it. If you ever saw him draw live, he worked on A2 pieces of paper and yeah. just loved that sweeping, beautiful sweeping line. So these are, we're going to have a look at his later work. This is from the 90s. 97. So we'll compare the two styles. Yeah. But um, this is 1950. So this most of this would be done in ink. Yep. On paper. Yep. Large scale. And yeah. Then, uh, so the thing that I noticed about, I mean, these, it's incredible the amount of um, faces that he would put into a uh, into a story. Yeah. Because essentially these are, this is a story of the week, right? Yep. So the battle of the giants, the battle of the teams. Yep. So this is the Saints and the Blues and the yep. Saints are obviously one and they're throwing their halos and yep. hooping them around the Carlton guys. <laughs> Cool. Beautiful uh, negative, positive and negative space with, yes. this, um, with the blacks yep. and the whites. So exactly. they stood out on the newspaper. Beautifully balanced. Amongst everything else. Yeah. And, you know, always a, um, a master of invention. So you come up with something that's completely off the planet. Yes, he always dream is the blimp. Incredible. Who's this little guy here? Archie says. Was he another? He was a commenter. Yeah. So he, yeah, he was the guy that commented in Wiggy's cartoons. You just right. So every week, yeah. there's Archie. So that was Archie. Archie started he, uh, in uh, the early cartoons, and then um, Archie became Wig himself. And so he started drawing himself in. <laughs> did he? Wig's did, day in Wig's world. Uh, did, Wig's did Wig have weekend. a mustache before Archie? Who was the first with a mustache, Archie or Wig? Um, good question. Good question. What I came first, Wiggy, the I, cart or the horse? I knew Wig for a long time, and yeah. um, he always had the moustache. And I, I think Joan once told me that he was born with it. So I yeah. think he might have been born with that little moustache. <laughs> That's amazing. This is a beautiful piece. So these Look are all at the those captains. Lines. The this captains. is what I remember. Him. Yeah, beautiful piece. So that's the all the captains. Thick of the, chins of the year. They look so three dimensional, oh, so, so beautiful and round. And so Dick Bowl, Whopper Lane, Dick Reynolds, yeah. Les Foot. Yeah. Um, that's Norm Smith there. Yep. Don't know who they are. Uh, it doesn't matter. Who? Oh, uh, Karen from Hawthorne. 
Um, okay. I'll try not to. I'll, I threw you I'll, off there because I didn't know them. I'll keep. Uh, I'll stop getting my um, Shane McGrath in Melbourne. Stop getting my <laughs> finger in the way. So yeah, no, that, no, you can do that. Beautiful line. So that would have been a, yeah, a nice big piece. Yeah. If you like to work large. It's brilliant, um, brilliant work. I just love the 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 story and the um, the invention of the characters. Yeah. And every time Mimi Archie noises, Archie gets noises. in on these little. Yeah. Situations, these little side comments. The Hawks Archie yelled his head off, but got it back to end up in bed with Barricus' throat. So Archie yeah. was obviously a Hawks supporter. Yep. Um, at the time, yep. they didn't have a lot. They didn't have a lot of supporters in the in the fifties. Right. They was... sort of they came in in nineteen twenty five Hawthorne and struggled for years. But um, right. But then they won their first premiership in nineteen sixty one. Archie so again? Not too far from here. Archie again. Look at this beautiful caricature of this fellow, Conley. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Obviously, he had a big nose too. Yep. As he mentions, well, I've he, got the bromide. Yeah. So there's a, I've got the bromide of that one there. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah. Which is nice and clean, so it, it shows the blacks and the, and the beautiful line work. Hmm. And um, you know, the tradition in the day was to put the names of the the people. So it's Arthur Morris. And, yeah. Oh, his little um, yeah, Charlie Callender. ribbons. Yeah, little ribbons. Fonts Kine. Yep. So, I mean, obviously the readers have recognised them, but the um, is that for posterity, the naming? No, no, I think it's to ribbons. help people know Interstate, what was like going maybe, on. Maybe we didn't know who they were. This one here, because I'm an old Fitzroy supporter. Can you get that one on the top there? So Vic Chanter was a tough... Um, Fullback for Fitzroy and used to play on Coleman. Who yep. and, um, Coleman was, you know, the Essendon champion goal kicker. That, and I think Chander might have been one of the only players to keep him to, or maybe the only player to keep him goalless in a yep. game. But it was a tough old, tough old fellow, tough old matchup. You know, this yep. was back in the days when footy was tough. It's magic stuff. Magic stuff. Look at some of the expressions that he gets here. It's just. Yeah, that's beautiful. Outstanding. Um, so he used to go to um, training um, yep. and go into the rooms to draw. And um, Wegg was always a wonderful life caricaturist. So he would he would work from life very quickly and then go home with his ideas and get it down on paper. So he'd get a, as a journalist, he'd sort of get a scoop from the game. Yeah, he'd go to training. Catch, catch some of the scuttlebutt, some go of the training. action. Yeah, see how their faces worked and how, and the lines of their face and their eyes and yeah. those sorts of things. <laughs> it's a beautiful one of Jock McHale. He was the Collingwood. Oh, look at that. Collingwood coach for 40 years or over yeah. 40 years and um, the veteran coach. That's a beautiful piece. Yeah, beautiful piece, isn't it? Look at that line. I wonder if you get to the stage where you have to count the number of wrinkles just to sort of get, <laughs> am I doing too much? Am I going too less? We called Wegg the Lion King because it was all about the Lion the King. Lion, love the it. The Lion King. Yeah. He, he really was. Uh, well, that's what I remember for him. Uh, like he was a hard worker him and uh, he started work. He, he'd get picked up from his house in Heathmont. These are mm. probably not this time, but sort of later and he'd. Yeah. Get into work about so he get picked up at five thirty. Get to yeah. work at about six and try to have his first cartoon done by at least eight thirty, and then spend the rest of the day. Rest in the, the day pub. was his. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's the way to work, though, isn't it? Mm. Well, it certainly was then. So uh, this is an important thing for uh, people um, that editors don't really get. Um, the readers love cartoons and they get this is what they invest in when you pay your 10 cents for a paper you pay for these little stories these little anecdotes these little inside visual stories that you get you can only get this from a cartoonist and this is a cartoonist at the height of his career really at the top of his game and able to in you know get a story like a journalist would but easily to digest because most people, even back then in the 50s, they don't want to pour through, you know, a whole article. If you can get the um, main story or an interesting take on the game, you do it from the cartoon. So this is a lovely piece uh, here. So this is Dick Reynolds being um, shaved. Yes. When the, the Don <laughs> scraped the old mower. And beat north by three the points. The push mower. So... Uh, Dick Reynolds, a man before his time, obviously had a little bit of a 
Five o'clock shadow. Yep. Um, and a big schnoz. A big schnoz. And this one over here is, this is a lovely, this is, I remember seeing this, the first time I met Bill, he showed me this book and um, Barry's son's left it to me. But yeah. um, look at that hair. I remember this piece in particular just being so beautiful because it had old fellas like Frank Curcio was a Fitzroy, um, yeah. a tough old Fitzroy player who was a uh, concert violinist, a professional violinist as a job. And um, so he tried, when he punched, he tried to punch with his... Like, this is what caricatures are all about, aren't they? It's the invention, it's the possibilities that you can take these these lines, these, these um, liberties with line. Yeah, so this dates the, these cartoons that we've been looking at. So they've been 1949, 90, um, 1950. So, yep. um, so this is a bunch of tear sheets. Uh, here we go into so Beggy, we started cartoons. Um, at the paper basically when he got back from New Guinea. Um, yep. It was sort of his first job. Yep. Um, told to go away and learn how to draw. And <laughs> and he did. Yeah, he did. He studied um, illustration and uh, painting, I think, under Will, uh, Bill Dargie. And yep. Dick Ovenden taught him at RMIT too. Uh, taught him animation at RMIT. Dick Ovenden was a great... Taught him animation. Yeah, yeah. Dick Avenden was a great footy caricaturist, cartoonist as well. So um, right. Yeah. So you'd learn a lot of drawing. Animators have to draw very um, quickly mm. in order to, you know, make the um, the deadlines. It's so many foot or um, feet per day or something. Mm. Of used film. to used to do um, cigarette cards. So these were um, he did this wonderful series of cigarette cards. Yeah. So these were and we. Love to reuse heads. Like yeah. If he if he could, if he got the head As right, bromides he, or so, something. Uh, or uh, no, he would, would just trace over. Wegg would take would Wegg would take that piece of paper and he would cut it out that head and he would use it again. Yeah. In a in another uh, Is, cartoon. Isn't that weird? That's that's so bizarre. I guess when you put it, you've invested so much time and energy into getting the likeness and you're happy with that, you don't want to sort of fudge it and oh, yeah. sort of relearn it. He's Archie the Hawthorne supporter again. Yeah. There he is. The bottom, here's the bottom rung wall. The hawks have had it. So he's, the hawks don't want to be on the bottom rung anymore and then they're yep. handing it to the kangaroos. Uh, how about that? <laughs> and these are, um, so he did uh, beautiful caricatures of um, yeah. big names at the time. Good teeth um, in there. Yeah, they're lovely. And the, the, and the little, the body, he does the same thing I've noticed with the hands. They're, a lot of them, he'll take, he'll take, um, he'll simplify a lot of the hand poses, but now and again he'll do something quite caricature, quite unique. Mm. So that's Alan Rutherford, is the, they're called the Baron. Yeah. So we put the crown on it. <laughs> I love these. Yeah, Keith Warburton. And then the lines things, on uh, them, the, the shadows, Bob Rose, little, his, little hairs in his chest. Magpie. And yeah. his legs. Yeah. So we worked with um, worked in texture and yeah. um, a couple of different sizes. Um, yeah. You like the big old thick markers for the for the outline of the chin and the the cheek. Love the thick line, the thin line, and then we would. So do these these, lines. these are definitely markers, but they're made to look like. Yeah, most of the original stuff I found of where he's really... always and, and watching him work, he liked working in textures and. Um, so I don't think he was a big. Here's a little Napoleon story. He did, uh, he did paint his um, black areas in with Indian ink. Mm. Um, so I've got some of his Indian, big bottles of Indian ink. He used yeah. to buy these big, big bottles. Well, that's less streaky than a colouring in a, in a with a texture. I'll show you one. This is beautiful. Oh. Big, big bottles. Of, so that's <laughs> Weggy's Indian ink. Yeah. And um, and. If you ever went to Weg's place, you um, just be careful. You never you didn't 46. get splashed with uh, ink because he um, used to uh, used to. Would he be argumentative with a brush in his mark. hand? Well, he, he, funny. He always put his texts and brushes in his mouth, but he oh, so okay. there's chew marks and everything. But he'd be he'd be um, there'd be splatter ink splatters on everything, and you'd lend him a book, and he'd give you the book back and say, oh, "I might have got a bit of ink on that heart." <laughs> Here we go, look at this. Oh, oh, look at this guy. 
A Tiger supporter searching for torn up season ticket. <laughs> See, Look at that, that never is change. a real 1950s design. So if you know anything about uh, Richmond supporters, yeah. when things aren't going great, they are known to microwave their their um <laughs> their membership card so uh back in those days it was tearing up the membership tickets right Isn't that funny yeah things never change so this is like 1950 and that's happening yeah beautiful monobrow on that it's yeah like that's uh, two click. caterpillars Full back in love. For south melbourne beautiful mating caterpillars yeah it's a very early louis richards who went on to lou become, richards yeah. uh even you would have heard of lou wouldn't you yeah yeah pretty funny in bed where is he? There he is, getting on camera. The beauty of this is, you know, these were put in the scrapbook in 1950 and kept out of the light. So, um, yep. you know, they're, they're, they're beautiful. Yeah, look at this wonderful 1951. This is the cat's... So when you say they're kept 51. out of the light, so they're in the drawer. These are obviously papers go yellow after yeah, a certain yeah, amount of yeah. time, tw 10, 20 years yeah, or so. Yeah, you can see. Even in the time it took him to probably put them in the book, they start to go a bit yellow. And then they, yeah. That's why they're all yellow. That's why they're called ephemera, because they're ephemeral. And then they'd stick them down with glue, they'd make themselves, which would come through, which has you know, ruined a lot of great cartoon. Yeah. We're going to have a look at another film. We're going to have a look at his dailies, um, mm. Weg's Day. So we'll have a look at his cartoons, but um, you start to see the power that this man had. He, uh, he yeah. loved this one of Coleman, and he used to uh, he used to t he cut that out and use that drawing, that, reuse that drawing all the time. And would you believe that drawing actually appears in the book we're going to look at in a sec, the 1997 book? So the same pose, yeah, the, the same, same, the same drawing. Yep. Yeah. But Wegg, um, so Wegg used to go in. Um, John Coleman, who yep. was the the champion full forward, yep. used to write a As column a, for the Herald Sun. So a close up of Archie. Uh, Wegg used to come in and do cartoons for his column. So he, yep. and Wegg was a mad bomber supporter. So he yep. used to, uh, you know, he loved going in and seeing Coleman and um, having a chat to him about what happened in the weekend. <laughs> yeah. So Wegg's uh, such a such a he must have had such a great sense of humour. Yeah. Because yeah. these these really show that he had a um, a wonderful time doing these. We grew up in Essendon, so he's a mad Essendon supporter, and he grew mm. up in Everfeldy Street, which Dick Reynolds, the guy that he's drawn so mm. many times, Dick Reynolds lived in the street, so Dick had come home. Dick was a you know teenager, and he'd come home a bit older than we. He'd yeah. come home from training, and they'd kick the ball in the street. So, wow, he was arrested on bomber supporter. Although you wouldn't know from his, um, you know, because he he loved he loved his footy, so he did all the drawings, mm. all the premiership posters. He, so this book is the 3AW Footy Fanatics. Yeah, so this came out in 97. Champions, was, past and present. And he used illustrations to um, accompany... Uh, poems. Uh, A.G. Simons, that's him there. Yep. His poems That's on the poet. Yep. There's Wegg. There's Weggy. There's, for some reason, there's a, looks like a school photo or something. No, that's a team photo from something. Uh, looks like a, yeah. Playing Barraka. So he's obviously played for a team mm. so these are um mr barassi these are like the Turk. yeah yeah so this, i texter. suppose these, are, these um show bill's um color work mm. how we used to work in color so. so this is more like a poster rather than a story so the story ostensibly is based on the on the poems yeah although i i presume looking at these that He's kind of just taken the character. I don't know whether the poems came last or the poems came at a different time. I would suggest because... he's done the poems and then he said, Bill, I've got a poem on brass. What do you got on brass? And then Bill would go and draw brass. Right, so he didn't really get base a lot of the story. There's no story in so much involved here, I think, from... Well, maybe oh, there's a little bit Windy Hill. Windy Hill, yeah. Okay, so there is a little bit of story involved so nice this is the 90s yeah it's yeah good, 97 it's so yeah transfer. he worked forever it's interesting that the way that arm works it's mm. all under his chin mm. yeah, looks the nice. chin looks like a butt very much it's nice and these are watercolor on illustration board yeah so he worked on illustration board i've yep. got some here somewhere and he um uh worked in texture and and then threw down his um, Dr. Martin's inks really, really quickly. Yep. Coloured very quickly. So these are from the 90s. These are football the stars from the 90s. Yep. 
and yeah, they would so be nothing. well there's a sort of all periods there so this yeah. is jack dyer so jack oh, dyer yeah, yeah. you know dyer played in the 20s and 30s yeah um right through the 40s that's an awesome one i think he played for 17 captain years, blood so. Um, I don't know why he's called Captain Blood, but uh, Captain Blood after, um, well, he was a tough man. Also right. was after um, Errol Flynn's. You know, oh, Captain okay, Blood. yeah, yeah. Because um, he was the captain of Richmond and he was tough as nails, so Captain Blood was his name. Right. Plugger. Don't ask me why they call him Plugger. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to know about. <laughs> no, that. we don't want to know. It could be some. So some... that's Bobby Skilton. That's a beautiful caricature of Bob. Yeah. The chimp. They used to call him. The chimp. Hmm. Right. South Melbourne skills, triple Brownlow medalist. Yeah. So this would have been a, a fairly new one. So uh, Spider Burton was a was a seven foot tall ruckman from Frio. Yeah. So I know we probably wouldn't have had a drawing of um, Matthew, so he would have done him for the book. Yeah. But uh, some of the other ones he would have he obviously either had drawn or would so this is more visit. This is like in the style of his life caricatures very much yeah but that's that's yeah. how we uh loose work, and yeah. so look at this look at the beautiful line on that night like he yeah did, he did these wonderful noses like mm. well, look at that the chisel edge line he just goes and he do these things mm. he was the quickest i ever saw he you know two and a half minutes he'd have you down on paper wow and it was i think i've said before he you know he was about um form he loved Rex his Hunt. style yeah Nicky Winmar, yep. holding his jumper. That's a famous pose. Yep. That's a beautiful one, man. Hmm. It's got all this... <laughs> it's sort of like a whoa wave of... Um... It's a famous day out of Collingwood. Yeah. Yes. And he and uh, Gilbert McAdam were getting abused and mm. pulled his jumper up. That's right. So it was a racist taunt that they were yeah, hitting him with yeah, racist taunt. on the stands and upset yeah. him. Upset the players. Yeah, well, he just said, "Look, and he, he had a so. great game, and yep. I think Gilbert kicked six or even maybe seven. I might have that wrong, but yeah." Um, and they, you know, took it up to the crowd. Yeah, and and created a change. I remember talking to. I know I've said this before yeah. to you too, but speaking to some of the guys in the cheer squad, and they said, "Oh, you know, we really just we changed after that. We went. Yeah, we made us think. We draw attention to the fact that you, you know, <laughs> watch what you say, because." Oh. Um, you know, it's wrong. This is lovely. I love these. Um, I love that uh, Tommy Sheridan on the. On the I love these footy. little fingernails and the little wrinkles. Mm. It just looks like um, 1960s um, advertising. So we do the you do the big thick black lines. Yep. And then he'd stick that texture in his mouth, and then he'd do the fine line. Yeah. And then he'd um, and he'd. So to save his textures, instead of, you know, he'd, he'd do ink. a bit of that, but he'd, he'd grab his ink and then he'd paint in the paint in the big areas of black. And then these, I presume, are like Dr. Martin's Yeah, colors. Dr. Martin's colours, yeah. Probably yeah. pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin, else. that was the one. He gave me pumpkin and scarlet. So, the, yeah, the first time I met him, he, I walked home with a whole lot of these Dr. Martin's inks and he was, he was trying to show me the... Um, so pumpkin was what we discussed. Yeah, so these are... Um, they're uh, extreme colours. They're what are they called? Concentrated. concentrated so what these yeah. are? They're actually watercolours. I've got a, a set of these. They're watercolours because a lot of airbrush artists used to use these, and they wouldn't clog. Yeah, and that's actually Wiggy's. Yeah, that's Wiggy's bottle. So he actually used to use. So I've got a lot of Wiggy. Yeah. Stuff. Well, that, that's what it actually looked like. The colour, oh. uh, scarlet. But they're little, from they're the little bowls they come well. from America. Mixing bowls, yeah. So that was ceramics. Wegg's ceramic mixing bowl. Yeah. And we're actually looking at the book on his. This was his drawing board. This is Wegg's drawing board. Yeah. So you could see a real laminated from the 1960s, yeah. 1950s. It was all sticky taped together and uh, yeah. covered in ink. And um, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's a good fella. So he got a lot of use out of these. Ah, uh, oh, this is acrylic, obviously, over the top. I think these um, speed lines. Yes, yeah, he'd, get, he'd do a little bit of white acrylic over the top. Yeah. So it's a different. Or gouache, it's a, it's a different. It's a totally different feel to the um, yep. foot, footy cartoons. Yeah. We had like a story. Here you've got to use an as an illustrator. You've got to compact the story into one image as much as you can. So you've got to be able to tell, you know, um, the 
shapes a, a narrative. In this case, obviously, he's he's referring to the poem, the which poem. again, yeah. you know, the is is a, a different thing. It's probably different to what um, uh, Weggie's used to, because he's probably used to finding his own narrative, his own stories and yep. gags. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, there's a there's a um, Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly from um, what's his name? No. no, not Boyd. Um, um, um. <laughs> tell us, tell, we've both forgotten him. Oh, what's he doing? Well, this is good radio. Uh, yeah. Good, yeah. <laughs> good podcast. Yeah. Um. I'll put a little, um, I'll, I'll find the name oh. and I'll put it up. <laughs> Let's go forward, shall we? Oh, Polly. Polly Farmer, who just passed. Yeah. So Paul's going to do a little check on the... Um, the artist. The artist. Probably... If, oh. Probably the most famous Australian artist that there, that ever lived. Sydney Nolan. Yeah, Sydney Nolan. Yeah, do you see how I said that like I knew it all the time? Yeah, yeah. See, so you so just sort of snuck it in there. We'll yeah, just remind you... Get rid of the bit you. where I said it was Boyd and uh, Sydney Nolan. We'll just remind you... Um, yeah. yeah. There we go. There's a Sydney, Sydney Nolan, Nolan. Ned Kelly. Mm. Better than the real thing. So, these guys here, uh, Peter Rue. Oh, think. that's uh, Peter Matera from the West Matera, Coast yeah. uh, Wingman. Yep. Um, Noel Smith medalist. Yeah, look at the cross hatching in the beard. Yeah, wonderful. So it's a, a beautiful drawing. Yeah. Some of these, look, some of these drawings aren't his, aren't his best, but um, no, but they're inventive, nice still the same. And this is the, his live caricature style, definitely. Yeah, very much. Did you see the the one of Coleman that I mentioned? He um, so that was interesting. So he was still using drawings from what? The, not here, here we go. Ah, so yeah. From the 1950s, he was still using drawings and uh, reusing them. Right. So he didn't want to have to draw Coleman again. And this oh, one was this there you go. Drawn in the, cut out. Drawn in the Melbourne Herald in 1952. Yeah. He didn't cut it out very well. He's extended the grass yeah, a little bit. The grass. This is pre-Photoshop, I'd say. Or, yeah. No, it had Photoshop, 1995. Oh, Bill never did use Photoshop yeah, version yeah. 1. Bill never used Photoshop. Yeah. No, he was... Um, so fans would be... He never really... used a computer bill, really, so we, yeah. you know, he would call me up occasionally and say, have you got any reference for, a, you know, this particular player I've got a draw and I'd, next you time say... I'd see him, I'd take him over there. Yeah. Or sometimes I'd, ma I remember mailing him. <laughs> oh, God. Um, some, and I would just, you know, I would just Google them and, you know, stick them down and print out, you know, a few heads and mail yeah. them over to him to do his drawing yeah. or I'd catch up with him. Absolutely. We did a few gigs. Um, live gigs, so I could give it to him then. Or this is magic, absolute magic. Yeah, Gold Lock King. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So just to recap, this is um, Weg's football cartoons tear sheets, and uh, as you as um, we've uh, discussed before. You know the um, invention of this man's work. You have to sort of, you have to really um, look at it really carefully and really so, closely. It has such, such a, a beautiful wit, such yeah. a beautiful sense of humour. Great sense of humour. Smart guy. A great on, understanding of the of the topic. Could talk on any subject, especially yep. art and architecture. And he would, if he were here now, he'd slap me for saying boy for Nolan. Yeah. And. Um, just could talk on most subjects, very erudite. Uh, so he literally did hundreds of thousands of cartoons. Hundreds you, of thousands. Hundreds yeah. of thousands. Yeah. Over a career that, that went from the 1930s, late 30s? To yeah, late, oh, well, after the war. So, after the war. Yeah, it was during the war late in New Guinea. He, he decided he wanted to be a cartoonist. Yeah. There's a great story where he went to Sydney and he was in a, he, um, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a long story, but he, he so I'll, I'll cut it down quickly. Um, he got a terrible infection in his leg. Um, he went to an American hospital to get it fixed because the Aussie hospitals at the time weren't great, according to Bill. Um, his, uh, his mate Joe uh, Nakamura said, you must go to an American hospital. They cut his uniform off him um, and burned it and 
uh, they fixed the abscess in his leg, which was so big you put your fist in, and they gave him an American uniform to wear, and he was um, going to be charged with going AWOL um, and um, being out of uniform. And uh, But it was right at the end of the war. Came back to Australia, all he had to wear was this American uniform. Um, walked into a newspaper in Sydney and said, I, I want to be a cartoonist. And the editor said, uh, okay, you're hired. So they gave him some money, went and bought a suit, um, got some accommodation, went in on the Monday, and the editor, um, he was sort of working away or trying to you know, work out what he was going to do and making him coffees. And they said, and the guy said, what are you doing here? And he, who are you? And he said, I'm Bill Green. You hired me on Friday. And he said, well, I'm second here on Monday. He said, I thought you were American. Um, so they sacked him. And he, uh, so to the day he died, Bill didn't have a great affinity with Sydney. He didn't like Sydney much. Mm. And that was why. Well, that's why he told me that was why. See, if you were a Yank cartoonist back in those days, you could mm. walk into any job in Melbourne or Sydney or in Australia. Mm. But when they found out he was, a, he was born in Melbourne, they didn't want <laughs> I would have just put on an American accent. Yeah, which he could have done. <laughs> yeah. Just could have done. He said, yeah, I'm only joking. So we left and uh, came back home to Melbourne and then mm. got a job at the Herald Sun when um, uh, Wells went on, Sammy Wells went on holiday. Magic, mm. magic stuff. That was a long story. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Um, so this is uh, Franz Cantor and Paul Harvey, and we'll catch you next time round. Don't forget to subscribe on the channel if you want any more films. We're going to go through Wegg's uh, past and uh, and uh, uh, really have Wegg's a look, dissect his uh, his style and have a look at mm. his sense of humour and his and his work in general. The Wegg's weekend, the Wegg's uh, the Wegg's day. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. All right. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Franz. Bye bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.